What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G Miles World. And what we're going to be jumping into right now is some of the things that we went over in our last stream. Now, we recently streamed on Twitch. A lot of you guys were trying to tell me, like, look, we probably should go ahead and make some kind of adjustments because we almost lost a critical game because, you know, Pat Tillman is kind of slow in the game. Unless you have uh, the Arizona Cardinals chemistry to get him to a 99 speed, he will get burnt or he won't be fast enough to kind of return the ball uh, on interceptions and stuff like that. So we decided to make a couple adjustments, all right? Now, a lot of these things, we've gone actually back to what it was before. I don't know if you guys remember, earlier in the year, we used corners at safety because the corners weren't fast enough. Um, well, the safeties weren't fast enough at that time. They had like, you know, Jamal Adams, a couple big hitters, but the dudes didn't really have speed. So we took corners and played them at safety. We're going to be doing a little bit of that stuff also because pretty much I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you guys. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be going back to utilizing Deion Sanders, but we're going to be utilizing him at the free safety position. We're going to be making, uh, you know, obviously um, Taylor Mays play a strong safety position and we're going to be using him. So pretty much what I did for this video, if you guys are not subscribed to GMI's World Gaming right here on YouTube, um, I pretty much went ahead, took the abilities off of Pat Tillman, put it on Taylor Mays, and then put the free safety as Deion Sanders for my defense. All right, so now this guy comes out with, um, you know, pretty much it comes out with golden ticket RG3. Uh, what he's looking to do is, you know, pretty much be a complete idiot and run around, you know, probably run the dive. Like, he, he wants to do whatever everybody else is doing out of this formation. Now, look, it is a very, very annoying uh, formation to defend, right? It is easy to defend if you don't want to send a lot of pressure every time. But for those of us that send everybody, you know, your head coach, the cheerleaders, and the GM, we're going to have issues unless we know exactly where they want to go with the ball. Now, the most difficult thing about near close flex is that they can throw it right at your user on post ins, things like that, if the card has abilities. So what you'll notice is the players that you play against, the cards that they're continuously throwing the ball in the coverage with, they obviously have abilities, right? So you're going to have to make sure that you're completely underneath the route. If you're anywhere else around it, like, you know, to the side of it, you know, whatever, he's going to actually catch the ball no matter what. It's part of the game. That's why the abilities are there. So you're going to see what this guy's going to do. Now, I fully expected a complete ridiculous scenario. Like, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I didn't know what the guy was doing. Um, also, you're going to see in this video where uh, he throws the ball and sometimes lurker doesn't work. Now, I don't know exactly how... He was able to not let me trigger the animation, but we'll get to that in a second. But you'll see, Taylor Mays is there. We still have LT. Okay, LT still makes noise. You know what I'm saying? Dude's name ring bells in prison cells. But this is what I'm talking about. When dudes come out and want to run the dive, you got to be very, very careful. Right now, what we're in is a regular 3-4. You don't have to run the 3-4 like this, okay, where you pinch the line and spread the linebackers. But pretty much what happens with this, it kind of helps if the guy wants to run outside the pocket. Does it help completely stop the run? Probably not, but you can see he had to wait. He, had, he couldn't go anywhere. If he would have ran outside the pocket, you know, pretty much he would have got hit instantly. The only thing about it is it takes time for the pressure to get there. Good job, Richard Sherman. Way to get dotted, Brett. Way to get dotted right quick. Um, that's one of the major things. Now, as you see what he's trying to do right here, he's just continuously trying to, you know, run that dive, um, see what he can get out of it. That's typically what most of these guys are gonna do. Then they'll, see right there where he threw that, you can see with Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram, I don't believe Evan Ingram has the, um, a, he doesn't have an ability, right? So you got to watch Moss. Okay, you have to definitely watch Moss. Now, another thing you guys have to pay attention to, it looks like he has his center. Um, you know, probably has passing cams and stuff like that, which is why he's getting so much time. Now, you see how he throws it in the coverage, but he throws it to Randy Moss? Those things right there, you have to be able to accept that. There's nothing you can do about it. This guy got an ebook in a language that he couldn't read, and he just came out and started doing this. So he thinks that because he has, you see how my guy got nano detected also, and right there, that's what I was talking about. You see how Pat, uh, not, not Pat, uh, Taylor Mays just didn't jump, and then this guy's gonna just start. This is me right here, bro, just walking into a wall, dog, because like it's just never gonna stop. Like me trying to tell EA that should not happen. That's me trying to tell EA, like, bro, just talking to a wall, man. It is what it is, though, because I realized what was going on, and it was later on in the game that I saw. I was like, oh snap. You know look like how when you're playing these guys, when they come out of near close flex, you're just like, you know, the dude's garbage. We gotta just figure out like what what does he want to do? Does he want to run around outside the pocket and throw the post? Does he want to run the dive? Like what does he want to do? This guy wanted to do everything. He wanted to be the ultimate gentleman. So we have to be smart about the way that we approach it. Because if we don't uh, approach it the right way, it can cause major problems for us. So that's something that we have to pay attention to. So here we go right now. As we get the ball back, we know, like, first of all, he's going to run, you know, the two men under and all that stuff. Right here, I, I, yo, he sent eight. All right, cool. 
I didn't even realize what he was doing. Low key, I think I just got an idea. When I was playing this guy, I got a real good idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys know about it very, very soon. Um, probably, you know, within the next coming days, because I was looking at the way that a lot of people are playing me, and um, you know, a lot of people understand my offense. Like people thought I was joking when I said I run streaks and stretch. Uh, but a lot of other people are starting to run it, but they're getting dominated. Um, and people are telling them like, yo, don't run Gmai's offense, it's wild. But it is a wild offense, but I'm gonna make it better. Because after I looked at this gameplay, I realized what these guys do. Um, you know, pretty much if you send everybody, you're asking for it. But a lot of the guys, what they do is they play me smarter. Uh, they'll put a lot of people in coverage. Uh, they realize that they're gonna get dominated. And, um, you know, it, it really opens up a lot of other things that I need to start taking advantage of. So I'm going to be going into that a little bit um, a little bit uh, sooner uh, than later. You can see right there what I was talking about. You see the way the defense is set up right there? All right, we're going to go ahead and pick that with Taylor Mays. But the way the defense is set up, he can't run outside the pocket. You see what I'm saying? So the, the big objective of defending near close, like right here, we're running bear, right? We're running 3-4 bear. 3-4 bear can be dangerous if you don't have the guys in the right spot. Now, this guy is very excited. He's doing, you know, the R1. He thinks he's good. It's really, really good, man. I love when guys do that when they suck at the game. Like this guy right here, I kind of I kind of like he was doing that. Because when you run bear, right? See, the 3-4 the bear, the way I set it up, it's going to screen no matter what you're in. You could block, you know, 8, 9, whatever. But the thing about it is, in near close, if you don't have everybody at the right spot, that's what's going to happen. And that's why a lot of people are scared to run uh, bear on the near, the, you know, the near offense, but you shouldn't be scared, bro. And if you are scared, get a dog. I right, throw this dot right quick. He ain't playing D. Um, so like I said, once I saw that that's what he did, I, I was pretty much good to go. I knew exactly what we needed to do to kind of fix that. That's the first time Akoya actually, you know, did a block the way he's supposed to um, in a very, very long time. Like he ran to the guy and actually blocked him and I was able to go for six. So as we go back right now, I'm going to continue to play bear. But the thing about Bear that's dangerous, I'm gonna let you guys understand this, right? Warren Sapp is a key, you know, listen, bro. I, I don't know, maybe maybe him and you know Mean Joe Green does the same things because Mean Joe Green was straight up giving me hell when I played against him recently. He just throwing my center out the way. Now I know you guys told me Alex Mack is garbage, right? We need to get rid of him. If you guys were one of those, you know, one of those guys would tell me, or you think that Alex Mack is garbage, write the number nine in the comment section. Dude's low-key garbage, we have to get rid of him. But people are just throwing him out the way like he's not even supposed to be there. Um, that's new though, because he was pretty good when I first upgraded him. Uh, right here, what we did was we switched LT to the left, uh, to the right side. Um, right there, he just starts running up the middle again. Um, so he sees that we're running the bear, right? And now you'll see that Warren Sapp right there. We actually, you know, was able to get in right there. Over here, we start to stop it. I'm starting to figure out the way that my players need to play. And then obviously right there, that's what you have to worry about. Because when they throw the ball right in the coverage, you can't do nothing if the guy has abilities. That's something that you just have to deal with. So we have to just be ready for it. He's going to run that. We got to be ready to stop it. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much go ahead. Just yeah, push him forward. Right there, we come right in. Stop him behind the line. Third and inches. Cool. Over here, he goes for it on fourth down. Now, remember, Night Train is now on the left and Richard Sherman's on the right. Night Train plays excellent defense, no matter what you have him in. You know what I'm saying? Like you try to, he tries to throw a quick route right there. Night Train is like, nah, bro, my mom's ain't going nowhere, and he just plays it. But N Night Train is a very, very unique uh, cornerback in the game, which is kind of weird because his price is lower than a lot of the other corners. But he's the best corner in the game, uh, pound for pound. Um, he just plays different, and that's why he's just been there no matter what. And no matter what's been going on, I just could never raid sell him because he's he's just different. Um, so right there, you, that was a key play right there. Um, and I kind of figured he would he would do that, and Night Train just overplayed it. Now, as we continue to go on, you're gonna see now he's gonna need to actually pass the ball. So because I know he needs to pass the ball, we're gonna continue to play the bear. Because the bear is, is primarily gonna lock up the pass, you know, for the most part. Remember, the more people they have on abilities on offense, um, you know, like receivers, tight ends, the more you gotta be scared. This guy, he's like kind of a guy that buys ebooks and like, you know what I'm saying, bro, where's the G-string around his house? and hasn't changed in months. So we're not really worried about it. You see how dudes are screaming? He, it doesn't matter about his center's abilities. You see what I'm saying? So that whole, you see the center? It doesn't matter about that. But he bought the ebook and it was in another language and he said, okay, I'll take it. So th that's his problem. Right there, he got a lot of time. Look at the center. Center's still trying to play D. Uh, I mean, play O and block, but you know, he got a little bit more time there. I don't know what I did actually. Oh, that guy was in the zone. 
That's why. I didn't know he was still in the zone. All right, okay, okay, Sherman, take care of that. All right, cool. It doesn't really matter. He just threw it up in the coverage. He didn't care where it was going. Um, that's what's so interesting about these guys. They really don't care. Um, the, the ball just has to go near the person with the abilities, and then it looks, you know, it looks safe for them to go ahead and throw it. But obviously, this guy was blind in both eyes. Well, he was blind in one eye, and he couldn't see out the other, so you call it what you want to. Um, and he was just doing whatever he wanted. But that's why I'm happy to kind of, I ran into this guy right after the stream. Or oh, was it before the stream? No, it was after the stream. Yeah, to kind of, um, you know, to test it out because I wanted to make sure because we keep it going as a journey. So if it's not documented here at G Myers World, it's documented on G Myers World Gaming right here on YouTube. So you get both of them. So it's not really a big deal. You see what I'm saying, bro? Like it is definitely something that you guys should absolutely keep in mind. Don't be scared to change up a lot of the things that you're actively doing, okay? Because with the way that it is, with the way that the game is programmed, you're gonna have to adjust. And even with the things that I'm doing right now, I can run into somebody else and it could be absolutely wild, bro. It could be absolutely wild. You know, like the next game, the dude could just run all over me, do whatever he wants, pick my mom's up. But I understand that if I'm gonna run the bear, this is a dangerous defense to run against it, but I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna see what he can do. And if he breaks a run here and there, he just breaks it. And you gotta be willing to deal with that. But LT don't care, dog. Bro, LT, look, look at this dude. He's about to dive in his mom. It's like, okay, no, bro, okay, LT. Meet me in the locker room, bro. Cause that, that you know, that, that celebration kinda, you know, it's kinda, you know what I'm saying? You gotta really tone it down a little bit. All right, yeah, run around with RG3, man. Yeah, he's worth the five million coins. Okay, man. This, this guy right here, I don't even know, I don't remember how he scored. To be honest with you, I don't remember anything he was doing. Oh, he's just gonna throw it up in the coverage with Deion Sanders, that's why. That's why Deion is there. You see what I'm saying, bro? And these are the things that we're gonna go forward with. So as we as we look forward right now into the game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see, we got a couple more adjustments and I got some things that I wanna work on, but right here, okay, this was bad, this was bad. They gave him the animation behind the guy, but that's my fault with the way that I timed that. Um, that shit have went for six. All right, cool. Like double coverage doesn't mean anything. Like, you're supposed to get Moss in double coverage every snap. Uh, triple coverage, you might get lucky, but that right there, Calvin Johnson low-key. Uh, man, if that was Grunk, that's going for six. All right, good. It don't, it don't really matter, though. But this guy right here, he was a good experimental uh, lab rat. It worked out for us. Um, we see that... Oh, spin me, then. Spin me and pick my mom's up, too. We see that, you know, these defensive adjustments look pretty good. If you're going to be doing these adjustments or you've already replaced uh, Pat Tillman, let me know in the comment section, and I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. You continue to be safe. Happy Mother's Day to all your moms. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.